best practice for uh, single-use plastic. Uh, let's uh, give her a, a round of applause. Um, I'd like to invite um, Attorney Joanne Vines and, and uh, Ms. Marla Agas, uh, both from the um, DILG. They will talk to us about uh, the role of the uh, Department of Interior and Local Government in ensuring LG's compliance to laws and policies on uh, waste management. Good morning everyone. Thank you for inviting us here. So um, we are the representative of the DILG or the Department of Interior and Local Government. So we are here to discuss with you some of the activities or initiatives of the DILG to ensure that our LGUs are complying with our environmental laws and policies. So of course um, the DILG is working at, um, you know, working, doing its best within its powers and jurisdiction to ensure that um, there is um, solid waste management in our local level. Um, particularly, of course, um, our topic here on plastics. So what does the DILG do? So, of course, um, the basis of the power of DILG is under the local government code. We have a supervisory power over local government units. Then, of course, we also comply with the Supreme Court's writ of continuing um, mandamus for the Manila Bay area. We, we are also the represent a representative in the National Solid Waste Management Commission. Um, we also issue policies and guidelines. Um, we also assess the LGU compliance. Um, we also provide incentives and awards. Of course, um, on the opposite side of it, we issue show cause orders to non-compliant LGUs. And we provide capacity development to LGUs. So as I have said a while ago, we exercise general supervisory power over LGUs. Um, as provided under the local government codes, well, particularly Section 25. Um, of course, it's a delegated power from the president. So we ensure that their, the acts of the LGUs are within the scope of their prescribed powers and functions. Um, the president, through the DILG, exercises exercise such supervisory authority directly over the provinces the highly urbanized cities and independent component cities, then through the province with respect to component cities and municipalities, and through the city and municipality with respect to barangays. So as we all know under the Philippine Environment Code, each province, city, or municipality shall provide measures to facilitate the collection, transportation, processing and disposal of waste within its jurisdiction in coordination with government agencies concerned. So um, when it comes to our compliance with the Supreme Court's rate of continuing mandamus, of course, it's um, we are uh, directed by the Supreme Court to direct all local government units uh, but only in regions 3, 4A, and NCR, which are within the Manila Bay watershed area, to monitor outcome areas on compliance to having hygienic septic tanks and wastewater treatment facilities, and of course the implementation of Republic Act number 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000 and such other um, key environmental laws. So the DILG um, is mandated uh, to direct all covered LGUs, just the areas within Manila Bay area, to perform activities in the service of the outcome areas of the operational plan for the Manila Bay Coastal Strategy. 
Under this OPM BCS, we have um, a number of outcome areas monitored by the DISG. And one of which is that um, the solid waste ending up in Manila Bay should be reduced. Also, we are a representative in the National Solid Waste Management Commission, uh, which is provided under the RA9003. So here, the DILG helps in the review, approval, and of course, monitoring of local solid waste management plans, the provision of capacity development for selected LGUs on drafting of their local solid waste management plans, um, the monitoring of the local solid waste management boards, and of course, the provision of incentive scheme for effective solid waste management. We also issue policies or guidelines, such as um, the DILG Memorandum Circular on the reconstitution of local solid waste management boards and updates in organized ecological solid waste management committees of our guys. We also have issued a, a circular for the strict implementation of um, certain provisions of the RA9003 or the closure of open dump sites and establishment of material recovery facilities. Um, again, we again issued in 2011 the strict implementation of the provisions of RA9003 and then just recently we have these guidelines for um, the LGU compliance assessment in the Manila Bay area. So as I have mentioned a while ago, we have assessment for the LGU compliance. Um, we have uh, actually, for the Manila Bay area, before we only have the environmental compliance audit. It's just for the solid waste category. And then later on, we added some um, other categories for the waste, uh, sorry, liquid waste for the ISF and the information education campaign. Yeah. So um, we uh, expanded our LGU compliance assessment for other um, categories, not just for the solid waste. And then we also have the seat of the local governments for all LGUs, not just for the LGUs within the Manila Bay. So let me just provide you what are the, the indicators that we assess um, for the level of compliance of LGUs for the LGU compliance audit, just again, for just for the Manila Bay areas, for the Manila Bay area. One is for the existence of the solid waste management board within a city, city or municipality and then the functionality of the local solid waste management board and then whether or not they have ordinances on littering, open burning, and illegal dumping and then whether they have a 10-year solid waste management plan. Also, we check if they have policies on uh, we ha if they implement the, their policies on no littering, no open burning, and illegal dumping. And then we also check how many barangays have functional materials recovery facility or materials recovery systems. Also, we check if the LGU disposes of their residual, residual wastes in an approved or accredited sanitary landfill. And lastly would be the existence of waste diversion programs for biodegradable, recyclables, and residuals with potential. As for the SGLG or the Seal of Good Local Governments, um, again, this is for the other LGUs or um, all of the LGUs nationwide. So it's possible that you are an awardee for the Manila Bay and also you're an awardee for the SGLG. Um, for the SGLG, we have uh, a little bit, it's lenient, they have a lenient indicator for the SGLG. Um, like for the provinces, they only have two indicators for you to be able to pass the environment, environmental management category for the SGLG. One is for the present, for the convening of the Provincial Solid Waste Management Board, 
And the other is they have an approved tenure solid waste management plan. So if you already have those two, if you're a province, then you already passed the environmental management category for the SGLG. Then for the highly urbanized cities, um, you have a city solid waste management board. You don't have uh, operating and or control dump site. And then all of the following, which is um, you have an approved 10 years solid waste management plan, um, you have materials recovery facility, and you have an access to sanitary landfill for final disposal. For the independent component cities and municipalities, um, you have a solid waste management board. You don't have any operating open and or controlled dump site and any just two of the following. You have approved 10 years solid waste management plan, materials recovery facility, and or access to sanitary landfill for final disposal. So um, on the other side of it, if you are a non-compliant as you, we may issue show cause orders. Um, it's part of our general supervisory power to ensure that you act within the scope of their prescribed your prescribed powers and responsibilities. And uh, what we do is that we issue a letter to, some, uh, to require them to submit a reply or a report to explain what happened um, and what are their actions about that issue. So um, we provide uh, awards for the compliant LGUs. We have the Manila Bay, Bay, Manila Bay and, uh, Bayani Award awards and incentives for Manila Bay Area, and SGLG awards and special recognitions. So, yes, that's it. Um, I'll have my colleague to discuss further about the initiatives of the DILG. Yeah. Thank you. Authority Joyet has mentioned. Um, I will be present. Oh, oh my God. So uh, these are just some of the accomplishments that the department has um, done in the in the Manila Bay area. So this is in compliance with the SC Mandamus order, particularly in the outcome goal solid waste. And the uh, solid waste ending up in Manila be reduced. So, uh, here are the capacity developments. So, uh, since 2015, we have conducted capacity development in terms of uh, provision of assistance to the LGUs for the drafting of the 10 year solid waste management plans. So, we have uh, provided financial assistance to some LGUs for their conduct of the waste analysis and character. In Characterization study, which is a vital, um, and vital uh, material or document needed for the SWMP. Uh, we conducted a uh, right shop with the ten-year solid waste uh, for the ten-year solid waste management uh, drafting of the LGU. So we have coordinated with uh, DNR EMB regional offices so to help the LGUs uh, build and improve their technical capability in uh, drafting the plan and we also have uh, conducted the final uh, coaching workshops. So this is in preparation of the LGUs in their uh, presentation to the Solid Waste uh, Commission. We also have uh, altern seminars on alternative and composting tech, uh, technologies. So we have uh, invited in this, um, in this seminars the seniors of um, of selected LGUs to uh, give them or to, for us to have the opportunity to reiterate the go the role of the LGU um, partic on solid waste, particularly on composting. So since uh, some of the uh, initiatives really is focusing on the mandatory segregation, segregated uh, uh, in, uh, collection, so we use these seminars in. Um, uh, giving them the uh, the chance or 
to look at the alternative um, ways that they could also manage their uh, residual waste, which is uh, in compliance and um, consistent with our RA9003. And uh, we have also uh, seminars to orient our uh, officials. So this is uh, every time there's a new uh, there's an election, we conduct actually an orientation with the LGs just to ensure uh, that their compliance or in implementation of the RA9003 will uh, be consistent and the progress uh, will not stop us will not stop us we what we usually see in other programs okay. so um, since uh, solid waste management is uh, a complex uh, concern and that involves a lot of agencies we have interagency uh, coordination which is uh, very important um, to ensure the achievement of our goals so we have a manila part of um our program is the Manila Based Strategic Framework Operational Planning Workshop. So, uh, since the DALG Manila Bay PMO or Project Management Office is the cluster head of the solid waste management cluster of the um, uh, for the coastal strategy of Manila Bay, uh, we have uh, invited several agencies, MMDA, DNR, EMB, on the activities that, to, that are to be conducted for the five-year implementation of the RA9003. So, we have also conducted solid waste cluster meetings where we uh, meet and uh, where we meet and just to discuss uh, from based on the uh, mandates of the, uh, and roles of each agencies, what's, what are still or what are the things that still need to be done. And we have also facilitated and of coordination with uh, cleanup activities, so um, from one agency to our LGUs, and we partner with the academe, so uh, part of the uh, important uh, study that you have parted with is the uh, monitor compliance system governing on solid waste uh, management since we have the environmental compliance audit so we um, have coordinated with them on the on the uh, indicators that we have used in our audit okay so this is just the accomplishments in the vanilla bay area so these are the LGUs. So after this initiatives, these are the LGUs that have an approved tenure solid waste master, uh, solid waste management plan from 2011 to 2019. So we can see that there is an increase from, I believe it's only two LGUs approved in 2011 in the Manila area, and now we have 165 LGUs. So implementation of segregation as source. So these are the LGUs that uh, have an ordinance on mandatory segregation at source um, that is being adopted. Uh, this are seventy percent of it is implement. Seventy percent of its barangay is adopting this um, this local ordinance. And we have uh, yeah implementation of segregated collection. So. Uh, same the LGUs that have uh, that um, seventy percent of its barangays are um, implementing segregated collection and establishment of MRF. So we're looking at the LGUs that um, that have uh, seventy percent of its area covered or is being serviced by an MRF. And of course, disposal residual waste and approved disposal facility. So these are the LGUs that are um, disposing, or that they have a contract with the with the sanitary landfill for their disposal of the residual waste. And this SGLG not just for the uh, Manila Bay area, so it's part of the um, nationwide, as the as our attorney mentioned. So uh, as you can see that. There's a lot of, of uh, LGUs that have that have been awarded with SJLG, and every year we are um, 
very to link this um, SGLG and uh, next, I'm not sure but there have been, um, it has been considered to upscale this SGLG uh, criteria for environment and to include the indicators of the environmental compliance audit. So we, uh, we are looking actually to uh, include the um, indicators for mandatory segregation, for the um, segregated uh, segregation at source. Yeah, so some pictures of the SGLG, so this was the last um, 2019 award. Okay, and for the Manila Bayani Awardee, so, um, or Manila Bayani Awardee, so, um, dear, uh, so since 2014, uh, we have the Manila Bayana, ba Bayani Awards and Incentives. So this, are, this was based on the uh, top performing environmental compliance. So these are the LGUs that uh, were found to ha be highly compliant to the indicators of the environmental compliance. So in 2014, uh, the winners are Victoria Tarlac and Quezon City. In 2015, Plara del Bulacan and Marquinhos City. In 2016, uh, Carmona Cavite and Antipolo City. And 2017, Teresa Rizal and Pasig City. And uh, right now, we are actually um, upgrading our indicators and there's still ongoing um, assessment. So this MBA is actually annually. And uh, this year, as uh, as mentioned, um, we will not uh, be looking at uh, at solid waste management indica indicators only, but we're adding the compliance of LGUs to ISF management and their liquid waste management. So, and yes, this will the the rewards will also be greater than that of the uh, last previous years. And some pictures of the uh, environmental compliance audit during the 2017 awarding. So, and just and since our ECA also highlights the best practices of the uh, LGUs, uh, this was uh, from 20, uh, 19, uh, 2018 validation. So this is. Uh, the Palit Basura, best practice of Baliwag Bulacan. So, and uh, composting facility. Okay. So, thank you.